so we're going to talk to All right. So, so, so how to, to start it uh, would be like, I used to do this thing you can see on, on, on the Facebook, Conversations with Jim. It was like a fake TV show. And I would get people to sit next to me in New Orleans and I would hold it like this. And if, if someone would hold this my phone and I would put it on and ask them questions about their life. But that's not what the, this is about the mural for the history of Dallas. I, I think I would like to speak. All Can right. Start? So, so we're going to talk about the Sandaga mural. And so just state your name, place of birth, and uh, then okay. you can go into it. Okay. Place of birth and name. Um, my, my name is Jim Bilger, and I was born in Wichita, Kansas. Um, went to school in Wichita. So. And um, my family moved here when I was a junior in high school, after living all over the country. This is where most of my family, uh, immediate family, stayed. But, and I went to art school then after going to high school in Richardson. And in the 80s was deep Elm artist, so I knew a lot of artists and musicians especially. I also mm -hmm. loved playing music. And, um, and what years were you active in Deep Ellum? Or when did you get your start? My first show in my whole life ever anywhere was in Deep Ellum when there was a club called the Theater Gallery owned by Russell Hobbs. And uh, that was it. And there was all the when you know it was the eighties, I couldn't tell you exactly when. I I I had I then after going to the high school in, in uh, Richardson went to Richland College for two years before going to North Texas. Go Rice. Thunder Ducks. You're a Thunder Duck. <laughs> that was really great experience, man. Uh, Richland, I love Richland. Uh, uh, that was when when I first you know started. Then I had an art class and stuff. In the Fannin building? I don't remember the names of buildings okay. and things. It was a while ago. Yeah. It was like the Different music things. art building. And that was the fall of 82 I started there. No, no. No, no. First I went to North Texas. The fall of 82. And uh, I, I messed up and I, I just wanted to come back and be around my friends that were from high school so I went to Richland. And then after the two years of Richland I went back to North Texas and stayed there eight years and worked in the art school and um, I would come and do shows in, in Deep Ellum. I never really, you know, I never lived in Deep Ellum or anything, but that was the place to go show your artwork, at least for a young guy that no one will talk to. And so I did a lot of shows in bars all across, but the exact year I couldn't remember, I have it written down somewhere, maybe 84. How old were you? 20. Okay. I was born in 1964. So how did, uh, so your favorite, uh, other than Sandago, what are some of your other favorite things that you've done here in Dallas art-wise? Before we I get used to do really, really cool murals in these clubs, which no longer exist. The murals were painted over uh, the Skillman Street pub, and I was pretty young, and they wanted a painting of London. I'd never been anywhere out of the country in those days. And uh, I just went to the library and got pictures of London and made a collage. And people were and getting married in front of it, you know, about London because they were English, and it was like really cool. And uh, it was, it was then, I don't know, and I did another mural for the same people that owned that club about all these famous people in history and, and artists, and to, you know, even Elvis and Einstein. You know, one of those kind of paintings with all the famous people, and they're all sitting around the bar. Those two were in Dallas, and they, but they both got painted over. I don't know. Now the Sondaga mural got painted over, that's why we're talking, because it's like we better... Uh, I was very grateful that somebody wanted to, to know about it. At the time, they, they, they uh, um, there was a TV camera, and there's a guy, my, my friend was named Daryl Thomas, and he owned the club and started it. And he's passed away and the things have changed and it's been painted over. Um, there was a TV thing and I was like, it was funny because they, they came to talk to me and I was like, well, don't, uh, yeah. there was, well, Jim's not good at talking on things, <laughs> but if you know, if you get like this, I'll talk about anything. Sundaga, it was a very wonderful experience in my life. I met so many fantastic musicians and I'd just come there and draw pictures. 
And this began because a friend of mine back in art school uh, was named Shelley Carroll, and I would draw him and Bradley Lee and uh, Drew. Was the bass player? His name was Drew. His last name is still in my mind, but he's very cool. But uh, and they would play at this pizza place, and I would draw pictures of them. It was across the street from the art school I worked at. When I was in North Texas, I worked at the sculpture lab as my job, and then I studied painting. I had other jobs at school too, but that was my favorite job. And I would go across the street. So I ran into to Shelley after 20 years at the Balcony Club because I liked going to. Wow, he invited me to come down to the Santaga, where his friend was, and then I would draw him there again, like it was school again, you know. And uh, got to know more guys. And then they made the new Santaga, and the owner had me make that mural. And that was the, the beginning of that, of that that mural. And the mural, um, you know, he he and I would discuss and ask what he wanted, and, you know. But what was really cool about it, and which, you know, once you realize, you know, he knew, he really knew how to get the most out of an artist. Because I would ask him, and he would just go, you're the artist. Right? Because you'd go and paint murals. I painted children's rooms all around Highland Park, or Plano also for a while as a job. And they'll always tell you exactly what they want. You know? It's like, but when they tell an artist to do what you want, they get... It's yeah. like a blank check. <laughs> but creatively. then they get art, real art, you know. So yeah. So he would do that, and uh, he he would ask me to put different. I, I mean, I I had him in the picture wearing a Stevie Wonder shirt because he was a fan of Stevie Wonder, mm -hmm. and uh, different things like that, and the names of different places he loved or where he had come from, stuff like that were were also added into it. And guys I knew were added into the picture, and. Um, positive words. What kind of paint did you use? I have a special technique that I use when I make murals out there that kind of makes them unique. Um, I first cover it with spray paint. It looks like a spray paint. Then I get a thick brush with wall paint. And so it makes like an impressionist, postmodern sort of just something I start looks different because I came into making you know graffiti murals coming from having an art degree and painting impressionist paintings and which I really love to do most most definitely prefer now but at that period I was really into that whole thing and when they wanted the walls so my walls would be you know sort of like a graffiti Monet some you know, kind of so you take the thick uh, latex ball paint after doing the covering it with spray and come back and paint the lines and shapes and give it definitions but kind of loosely not uh, too tight you know, sort of that's that's it spray paint and some house paint or outside wall paint that's like permanent how long were you uh, those kind of murals I mean I do other murals that I just use only house paint and make an outside wall or if it's inside but when it's that kind of mural, it's how long was it? How long was the process of painting the whole mural? The Subdaga mural was uh, two months, like almost every day, and I had a guy helping me. Yeah, very cool guy. Can you walk us through some of the imagery that you used in it for those who haven't seen it? Maybe well, some of friends from the time of uh, uh, drawing them playing at the club. You know, these guys I, I I knew that, you know, I would be drawn just afterwards, hanging around, talking and playing. And uh, they were mostly all people that played at the club, different guys. Bernard Wright, uh, Phil Brewer. Oh, I remember him. You know, um, Shelley, Brad, mm -hmm. Daryl, that was the only kind of cut. They called it the Cotton Club today at the time because it was a place where everybody mixed all colors. And I loved I loved that aspect of it too. Kept coming a lot coming from New Orleans. But, you know, where people got along together kinda. It was cool. And uh, 
I put, uh, I have to think, I have my girlfriend and I dance in that one. Yeah. Um, Bernard, uh, there were others. Oh, uh, Dana, I think, was in the South so the place that, um, so vibraphone students, mm -hmm. it was amazing. They're all amazing. I mean, it was in, and every, once a week there would be a, a jam session where they would have it. So, uh, and various ones, and I can't. And, and some ladies that were singers said, "Hey, put me in it." Whoever asked, as I was doing it, okay. I know, so. Remembering all the names, I remember, but I can't remember exactly all the different people were. The ones I said were in there. You had mentioned about hieroglyphs the other day. So there was that the Egyptian yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah. mentioned what was you you we well, only we finished it's a funny story if you were anyone that would know about the mural knew that this they didn't know really what it said but you could see these gold painted in gold the hieroglyphs and I had translated uh, the name of the club it's sort of a joke into Egyptian and to Egyptian, you can do it with your computer. You can do any. You can translate anything. And for a while, I got into that. You know. and, uh, it, and and here's the reasons why I did it for that was is is funny because I first painted on there, and I can probably find a picture. It said Sundaga eight thirteen. That's the address. Yeah, that was the name of the club too. That's what they called the club, and that was. Um, so that, that was the name. Where did the name come from? Sundaga, he, he had another club and it was over there by the Dragon Street area, I can't remember, the name. back in there. Uh, and it was just called Sundaga at the time. Because Sundaga isn't the name of a market from Mali, which is the country of Mali. And he would import stuff also at his place from, from Mali, and so he would be selling African foods and objects and things. And then it slowly turned more and more and more into like the coolest jazz club in town and he didn't do that anymore when he was coming over here. And he said, hey, I want you to come look at this wall. And I went over and this is, he told me this two years before. I went over there with him two years before he ever opened the club. And he just showed me that wall one time when I was visiting. Would I, I said, yeah, let me know. <laughs> Great. Last thing you see before the state fair was this big painting. Definitely helps paint so the that's vibe. where the word Sundaga is. It's a market. I mean, some kind of market. I've never been to Africa, but my friend had an imported uh, stuff from there. That, that's where he got the name. So, so that, was, that was it. Uh, about that question. What else could I say about the since that time? I could be standing in New York, you know. Art in New York, but Austria, or New Orleans, a lot where I do half my life. Work as an artist, working. Cause I had been a kid in New Orleans uh, before even coming here. My grandma was from there. And, uh, so my point is back to the mural. Um, someone tells me they're from Dallas. You ever heard of this mural? That's like almost everybody's knows about it. Or I meet someone that's visited and it had gotten like good stands all around. So it was well known. When did you leave Dallas? Short, I mean, was it after? The last time was three years ago. I was here coming back and forth between New Orleans because my mother lived in Plano and was passing away. And I was working in New Orleans as much as I possibly could because I knew how I can go where I go, make paintings, people come and buy them, and I can live and eat. But also, it was close enough to Dallas where I could, you know, come and stay with my mother, um, you know, every month or something, or every two weeks or something. You know. I have four brothers and sisters, so they were all, all, and I would come sometimes and give them a break from taking care of her as well because they were doing because they're all here in North Downs and so 
you said that she died in 2018, so after that I, I went back to see my family in Austria, my girlfriend in Prague, and go to New York, Carlton Arms, where I'm an artist, uh, for the hotel. And uh, they have many artists over the time, so I'm fortunate enough to be one of them. It's a mural hotel. It came, I should have been on my way to Vienna when the lockdown just happened. Two weeks later, I, I had a ticket to go back. But you couldn't. Americans aren't allowed still, <laughs> a year later. Well, so what are you doing in Dallas currently? Are you selling some art still here? Yeah, well, at the moment, me and my friend helped me go get the paintings that were on view and around New Orleans in the last three or four years, because I hadn't been back there either since the passing of my mother. I went and painted a mural called The Unity Wall, which is getting some notoriety there, and then left and didn't go back there until just now for also a couple of years. And so, and so uh, there's a show at a place called Curious Gardens. Mm -hmm. That's a guy I just met. He happened to be, when I was a sculpture lab assistant in North Texas, uh, he was a student. Who's he? His name is Jason, I think. Oh, okay. That owns the place. All right. Uh, yes, and Curious I, Gardens on I, I Garland Road. There you go. And he has this other place. In my friend was getting his oil changed so we could go to New Orleans and get the pictures. And I said, go, go look at that shop. I went in and I said, that guy looks familiar. I don't, we didn't know each other back then, but then we just kept talking and talking. It's turns a small turns out half of our friends are the same people. Like one of the ladies that works for him is someone that's been my friend for a long time that's a painter. Nice. Stuff like that. And then we just talked, oh, there's another friend we know. I just asked, you know, do you ever... So I, didn't, I don't remember how it came up that he mentioned he had another place that had a, a show a show showroom. But his other so, store? Yeah, the Curious Gardens. Is, he, I met him in the Curiosities, because mm -hmm. that's where my friend Todd was um, getting his oil changed, so we would be ready to. Yeah, that's a good babbling over there. And so you know, and he was getting his truck fixed, and I was like, "Why?" I like to go long walks check out all the shops and take pictures of the neighborhood, exercise and get ideas for art and stuff. You know, meditation walking, kind of. I call it serendipity walks. Just see what happens. And uh, so that that happened because, so right now there's there's a show. Cool beans. Do you yeah, have I'm any sure. like art on online for sale? Or any catalogs online that anyone could check out? Well, if you Google my name, you'll see. But I don't know if all of those that you'll see on there would be for sale. On Facebook, I post a lot of pictures and people uh, buy them. And there's a, they can see my art at a website called Art Slant. This comes from New York. Or there's lots of different websites they can see my, my work. Um, Is it artslant.com? Or That's it, yeah, artsign.com. Cool beans. I've got some different things. I'm not sure if it's running still or not, but I think they were going to close, close it. But it, it, was, it was the artist's website for New York, uh, you know, a while ago. They got full, no one else could get in it. And now I think they might even be. I can still see it, but. Some of those pictures I still have even in there, in that, a lot of them. I have them stored around the house. Have you been uh, to Deep Ellum since you've returned? No. Or um, just seen... Just drove through. And I, someone drove me just to, just to let's, uh, I want to go see the mural. And I was like, now it's a black wall and a woman's face. And, Oh, well, 2020 was quite a year. Yeah, it was. <laughs> what were Time you, for change. What was your impressions of some of your, con or, well, how would you describe the art scene in Deep Ellum when you first started? 
the energy or you know, who That's other amazing. people you worked with maybe some of your contemporaries well when I, I was super shy when I was young but I, I, I there's amazingly great creative people everywhere it was like you know um, but I would sign my my paintings for ten years by not my real name. My grandma would always yell at me. You don't like your own name. <laughs> but I'd do these with crazy paintings and the name was Sir Packy Bunk. So people in Debellum that have meet me now this last month I've been here um, because of a friend that buys my painting from uh, here, staying away from the New York winter. And uh, I just, you know, I walk around and I've met people that remember Sir Packy Bunk, but I, did, I didn't tell anybody that was me. I just did it and I would go to shows. And it was a way to educate myself, too, about what other people thought of my work. Because when you're the artist and you're standing there, they're, they're not going to give you the same um, true opinion. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I can't learn anything from you. You just want to blow up my bridge. ego up, you know. So I did it like that, and I would go to the show without not telling them I was who it was. And there was one called the Twilight. I think it's called the Twilight Room, and they had this big show. They had these big paintings in there for Becky Punk, and they had, it was a party place, you know. I just come around and I'm standing there, looking at this big painting that I had done, and so what do you think of it, that painting? And uh, I said, Wow. Thing I've ever seen, you know. Oh, wow, that's so, oh, man, that's amazing. You did that, and then the next person was, "What well, asshole did this shit?" <laughs> and I was like, "So, you know, that's where I learned to make my art f for me, because no matter who you are, no matter how famous you get, people say Picasso sucked, right? You can't be more a better artist or more famous than Picasso, oh, and there's still people that think he didn't know how to draw. <laughs> so it's like." But at the time when I was young, I was trying to check out, um, you know, what other people thought. And that, to me, was a clever way to find out what other people thought, because they'd be honest. Because they don't know I'm the one that did it. And uh, that's what I, I really, truly learned at that time, was just, just make your art, because no matter who you are, somebody's going to hate it. And you make this beautiful mural that eight million people love, somebody's going to paint it over it. <laughs> right? So, just don't let it affect you and just keep going on. I had to, this was in my 20s, you know, I was learning that lesson that way. But your, your, your original question was deep ellum. And in those days, uh, like the New Bohemians were around, playing in the neighborhood in the Ten Hands, and we would go and uh, one was called Fever in the Funk House, is that an old? Which one? Old band, Fever in the Funk House. Is Fever. that an old band coming from here? I think so. Sounds anyway, strange. there were all these, and my friends were in bands, and I was also kind of, uh, you know, in some bands too. Uh, that was in Denton. I, I later lived in Denton. I never lived in Deep Ellum. But always going to Deep Ellum because of the, the art shows. And um, like I had a couple shows at the Bar so for the. Um, I don't know. There's at least fifty different places. Gene's Stone Pit Barbecue was one of my first ones. It's an old barbecue. He was an old, he was, at that time, he's like, I don't think he might not still be alive by now, but he was like 60 or 70 year old guy that had let people put art on his barbecue. Place. Where was that? The Oh wow, I haven't heard of that one. So Gene's Stone time. Pit Barbecue? It was there in the 80s, so, and at that time he was even 60 or 70, been making barbecue there for 50, 40 or 50 years by that time, so mm -hmm. uh, that was one of my first shows, it was pretty cool. No one ever bought anything at any of these shows, um, and I would get one later, they, they, they saw them or something, and I would be, then they would buy it, you know, sometimes, but I had to you know, have other jobs. Well, I was trying to find more places in Deep Ellum, but there were so many creative artists. It was just were you commissioned for the Sandaga? Yeah. It was a friend price, but 
I got more out of it than the money they paid. Because of all the people knowing that I had done it. Um, Any in, uh, anything in downtown Dallas? Or mainly just the Deep Ellum area? Yeah. Was downtown kind of a wasteland back then? Kind of just tumbleweeds rolling around? <laughs> Isn't it still? No, no it's, it's, it's different. I know what it is. It's, I go walking around there a lot. I'm, I'm, oh, no, no, now it's pretty cool, actually. They go play. People who actually live there made it a lot cooler. I'm always at the Dallas Museum. Oh, I had shows. Mm -hmm. Where? Those, uh, it was called the Trammel Crow Building. And that now, and it's right across the street from the Dallas Museum. Two times I had shows. And in those days, now it's the Asian Art Museum. But, and he was, I, I met him, he was very cool. Uh, uh, oh God, I don't know that stuff. And he was providing a place for local artists. And he wanted to support the local arts. By, and so he made those two showrooms. Have you been to the Asian Art Museum? Mm -hmm. So you know where that fountain is. And so the top rooms were spaces for uh, wow. local artists. And, and there he would have lots of, and he always came down and met me. He was a super cool guy. And there I was, and I've, I mean, I was 25, or I don't know how old I was, I can't remember, somewhere around there. And I'm just standing there in this room full of my big paintings, and I'm looking out the window, and there's Dallas at the Dallas Museum. I mean, it was a really cool feeling, you know, uh, especially as a young guy trying to figure out stuff. And uh, all because of this really nice guy, and, he was, and so then he took me to uh, his other building. In those days, the building was um, surrounded by the same sculptures as the Louvre you know, from Paris. So they were they were uh, French all around the building at, at that one that's now the uh, and there was nothing down below it where there where is now the museum, you know. And so he had all of those Asian stuff mm -hmm. and his other building, which you can see from this building. There's another building. And he took me up to the top where there's a restaurant and showed me the, the Asian things, you know, and the art stuff and uh, this collection of things he had. And this French stuff now, I've, he's, there's another place that they own that's over there, some kind of business center. No one can go see him anymore. He had that French stuff for the whole public to see. And so when he passed away, uh, I think his daughter started this Asian museum. You know. So, um, Yeah, the crows were a uh, pretty prolific gift to the city of Dallas as far as art goes. They, yeah, I mean, they covered, they covered uh, the place with real art. And, and great. So anyway, now it's Asian Museum instead of that. And I, I even met the guy Nasher that started that. And he told me some stories about Chaka Um There's all levels of art going on in Dallas. So what did he have to say about Jacques Amé? It's a funny story. He, he, you could never, uh, he collected his work. And this is, I only talked to him once. Like I've, like one of my first early jobs was uh, doing the windows at Neiman Marcus in a place called Prestonwood. And uh, he spoke to me too before. I talked to him about uh, Diego Rivera. That was our comp. I, I remember when you meet these super famous guys, Remember what you talked about. So, uh, Nasher talking about Jacques was he said he could fly over to Paris and uh, to buy a sculpture and, and have a million dollars in his hand. But he wasn't allowed to, to meet with Jacques until after 11 o'clock. Because Jacques had a rule he talked to no one that wasn't a woman before 11 o'clock. <laughs> That's true. <pretty, laughs> yeah. You know who Jacques Of course, you know who he is. He's a, does those cool sculptures. Like the, the Holocaust thin things. Mm -hmm. I thought that would be a cool rule. <laughs> I try not to make any plans after 10 p.m. myself. It's similar sort of, but, but yeah, very nice. He didn't care if you had a million dollars, it didn't matter. 11 o'clock. Like if you're a man, I'm not talking <laughs> to you. <laughs> that's, then shortly there, I mean, that's the only time, I just, just he had opened that new museum and I was there to see it and someone goes, hey, Mr. Nasher, this is Jim, he's an artist. And that We talked for five minutes, he told me that story and it wasn't like I knew him or something. You know, just at his new place. 
There was another person you mentioned too. Did you mention the Stanley Marcus? Yeah, I did the windows at the shop. I can tell you about him a little bit because I've worked for him. And I also worked at this bar called Ristorante, Ristorante Valentino on Knox and Anderson and went to art school. I finally moved to Denton because I was tired of driving back and forth to go to school and work here. I just decided I'm going to get a job in Denton. Be where I work. So, but at the time, he would show up at the bar, and I just thought it was a coincidence. He liked to hang out at this nice bar. But I later learned after he passed away, talking to someone that knew him, his brain was a, he, was a, he knew every single person and about every single person, this is before computers were invented, or commonly used, that worked for him in any level, he knew everyone. And that's why he would show up and have a drink at the bar I was working at, I realized today. And it was a kind of upscale Italian thing. Uh, yeah, I did the windows, uh, a lot of I could carry it in the Christmas trees and stuff. I wasn't one of the main decorators, but I carried stuff and I made the signs for the store. And um, that was my first real art job. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> so you've met all the big wigs of Dallas. I met them. I'm not going to hang out them in their house or something, you know. But, but they're still pretty enigmatic, you know, to, to me. I see their names everywhere. I hear about them. I know some stories, but to you know, hear stories about... Well, I was around doing things. I was trying to put my art anywhere. And any job with uh, the arts, you know, was cool. That was my goal. Um, yeah. Me, uh, Stanley Marcus, uh, it's the first and only time I've ever been walking down the street and saw someone's face that I actually, like I've spoken to you, and your face is in the newspaper stand. I wow, what happened and, and I recognized the guy on the, that was him, I was like, uh, I was walking somewhere in Irving or something, he was on the face of the Dallas Morning News, and uh, uh, he was, when he passed away? Yeah, 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 when he passed away, it was his face on the cover, so I guess, you know, he was so instrumental to Dallas. I did one other thing for Dallas, there was a, a book. Dallas, a dynamic century. And it was a book of the history of Dallas. A very cool book. The guy paid me a thousand dollars to make it watercolor for the cover. And this came around when I had the channel. Code. He was a professor at SMU, and this book sold at Barnes and Nobles for a while. Now it doesn't, but you can still find it on eBay. And it's a cool book about. T and I had to go around Dallas, and and so I combined a lot of the different sites into the painting of Dallas. And they had just started to build the train, the new train. And oh yeah, in the early 80s? Yeah, this was around that. Probably 83 or... Sorry, well, I, I did a history thing on the DART rail. They already had the DART. Oh. Well, my friend that's got me here was a lawyer for DART. That's why I'm here now. But, uh, um, and she buys my paint. So, uh, no, uh, I can't remember the year I'm trying to, it might have been the, sh the year they had me do it. Because it had to do at the same time I had that Trammell Crow, and I have to try to remember when I, when I did that. It might have been 92. So the dart was already there because the dart train was in the painting. When I left Dallas, I, I, I moved to the National Park and got a job in the Redwoods. Nice. Totally away from the city. I think I interrupted you. You were talking about the the thousand dollars you got um, for the book, for for the painting that you did for the book. Or yeah, yeah. They, they bought the watercolor and then it was theirs to use. Okay. And they made that. Is so that it's on the cover of the book? It's or? the cover. It's the cover of this book of the history, and I don't even remember the guy's name. I know he was a professor at SMU of history. And, uh, he, you know, s a friend of mine asked me if I would want to talk to them to do it. And I had to talk to somebody from Oregon or something. And then, the, no, I never met him in person. What was it called one more time? Dallas, A Dynamic Century. Nice. And it starts from that little, uh, 
You know, if you go downtown, there's that little building in the middle of the park. It's like a old house or an old schoolhouse or something. Yeah, John Neely Bryan's cabin. See, I don't know. Yeah, that that I guess. And there's a park around it. Mm -hmm. That's even in the painting, and they tell about it and the thing, and it tells how quickly Dallas grew into being this giant city just within this short period of time. Looks like it's basically if you I mean if you judge the world history, you know. It, it came from that cabin to the tall buildings in a hundred years. Mike Hazel is the author of the book. You found it? Mm-hmm. But it's... Uh, I couldn't look at it. You have to get it on eBay. It's out of print. It's not... It's, it's a hard... There's a there's one left in stock here. Oh. They used to sell them at this place. What's the history place down south of Dallas? There's a... sure you're... That's why I was interested to talk to you. The history place is south of Dallas? There's a park. And there's the Dallas Historical Society. Oh, and Fair they, Park. Yeah. Wherever that was, I don't know. And they, they had a bunch of them in there. That was across the street from the Sandaga Expo area. Oh, that. Yeah, it might have been there. I went there before. No, there's another park farther down. Hmm. Fair Park is cool. I worked in there for a couple. My father was a pretty well-known good accountant and he was accountant for the Catherine the Great but I got to be a bodyguard for the Where golden was that? carriage it's in Fair Park they brought the golden carriage of Catherine the Great to Dallas and he hit my father he, he, you know he had this artist so you know, I liked stuff like that so he got me a job standing there with a red jacket like I was a Russian <laughs> <laughs> But it was beautiful, and it was in Fair Park. And then also at the World Cup, he was accountant again, and I worked at the World Cup, putting shirts on the on the stands. So it's Fair Park School. Yeah, they did a really beautiful restoration of the Hall of State building recently. Looks good. I heard about it. Those are the most beautiful murals in Dallas, at least. Have you been inside? I'm sure you have. Yeah, well, when the state fair was going on or something. Go around and look at all the stuff they have and the different people. There is Hare Krishnas and the cowboys and the <laughs> all too. Yeah, <laughs> the Hall of State is supposed to be like a mausoleum or a shrine to the history of Texas. And it's all made in 1936. And apparently the artist who did the Grand Hall, he had made all the paintings in like three big separate panels. And they're go along the walls of the the great hall in the middle of the hall of state and apparently that he had some asshole put them up when he left the room and they weren't lined up exactly correct and the artist got so pissed that he ran out of the building and threw up on the stairs <laughs> it's just it's well those paintings i mean that was an artist like I, I, now that you met i gotta go see him again because i think i'm fairly close to there right now yeah, you can. You said it's open. Uh, on weekdays before at five. You can go inside. See how the stuff. Well, uh, usually I don't know what it's like right now because of COVID, but it'd be easy to find out. Okay, and it's called the yeah the Hall Estate. Yeah, those were just a block away from the mural I did, and so that was also feeling really cool when I did that. It was like, well, here's this funky mural. Then you go down the street one block, and you're in that. I know, I mean, that's, you know, Michelangelo type stuff, I mean, that, uh, that was, a, those, I love looking at those, that was amazing. Also reminded me of, uh, one of my favorite artists is Rufino Tamayo, in his paintings. They used to have a really big one in the Dallas Museum, they still have some, he's a Mexican, Mexican muralist, and just paints the universe, it's, and those were kind of, kind of, in that level to my mind. Yeah, I want to go. You should. Yeah. But I, I still, you know, when you have to go and talk to a new person and try to explain, I've been doing a seminar this week from a lady from Prague I saw, and uh, she's a successful artist and she's helping people get better at, because uh, you have to somehow explain your work. People don't think in pictures like I do, they think in words. 
and so this seminar, just the last two weeks I've been doing, was uh, you know, being helpful with with that, because yeah, that's the intimidating part. Is trying to see, like right, I mean, I'm not you're you're cool to talk to. I'm not nervous right now. Nice. You know, not so bad. I mean, so, am I well? Would it, would it be I was okay if I smoked? I would, if you have one for me, it would be even better. You smoking inside? Um, you sip out weed? No, cigarettes. Oh, cigarettes, yeah, yeah, I've got a couple. Of I retired from that. I did 30 years ago. No, so, uh, do my stuff. I paint, paint, paint. You know, walk around, take pictures, and make paintings. and. Even in painting, I, like I'll do abstract and then I'll get tired of it and then I have to do landscapes and I love both. And, but then I, I even get tired of art. And so then I go play music when I'm lucky you know, with friends. What That's do you basically how I do it. And then, and, then, and then after a while you get tired of musicians and then you go painting. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> What's your instrument? Bass and, and, and you know, piano. And sometimes guitar. I like to sing. Cool. Just come sing a Todd's. Cocktail Todd's? Yeah. It's a great studio. Where'd you meet Todd at? The Balcony Club? The Balcony Club. Shelly was playing and we were going to see some jazz at night. And there he was. He got me reintroduced into after 20 years of us both doing something else. Um, he, he, uh, well, you know who he is, Shelly Carroll. I never met him. Oh, you never met him. Some nice people. I kind of, I, I started going to the Balcony Club around 2011. It's about the same as me. But it is kind of a blur. Years or, no, that was a few years before that. 2005. No, but we hadn't seen one another in 20 years, and he'd been off playing to do Kellington's Orchestra. Wow. I'd been living in Vienna doing all the stuff I did over there. I saw Duke Gellington's grandson come through Dallas. Who? Duke Gellington's grandson. He had a. He was doing his. I'm sure uh, he's Shelley's friend. I mean, he was I doing Duke Gellington's chamber works. They were playing at a. Oh, he had a concert. Oh, he's a musician too. I think figures he would be. Yeah, I mean, I just. You know, I had to go because it was the closest thing to Ellington that I could ever see live. Well, I mean, yeah. I've never seen it. I've never even seen my friend Shelly do it. I just, uh, but that's what attracted you know. Then after that, that they, and in those days, my father was my father was ill and had come to, come to, had had heart attack and come to. And at that time, my thing in Austria was finished. What do you? So we got reacquainted, and then came the Facebook and all. Then I just met more and more and more jazz musicians in, in, in Dallas. And this is sort of amazing, amazing music is going around in Dallas. I miss a balcony. Yeah, that was a very, very cool. And other people, a lot of the people are still my friends that would hang around at Facebook. You know. Have you been there in a while? Uh, have you seen? Because they uh, kind of reorganized the, the layout inside. Just now, recently, because I didn't go see, I didn't look at it, but I could see the tower. Mm. Uh, getting oriented to the neighborhood and where that shop was and stuff, and, and, to, and going to get groceries and around, go with Todd sometimes. But we haven't, uh, he told me a few things. Uh, no, I have not. Are they open again, or is it another name? Oh, it's still the Balcony Club. Just a few years ago, they um, kind of redid the inside of it, and um, so this. The here's stage a weird. Is oh, here's a story I got to tell. Uh, why Todd and I became friends? Once we met, it it came to be that he was very connected to a band called Victor Dada. Oh, okay. And I was a huge fan at Richland College. Because my English teacher was Victor Dada. Joe Stanko? Yeah, he was my English teacher. And, I could get, and uh, he said, we, he's having this 
performance at the planetarium this weekend and me and me and my friend that I played music with and I recently did play with them uh, were huge fans and he opened my mind to the universe as a I was about 18 or 19 you know and uh, he just he, he taught me what Dada was he was a Victor Dada and now here I am on Victor Stay Street. On Victor, and I find out that's where the name came from. I'm like, uh, this is super small world stuff, you know. And, uh, what was he like as a teacher as at Richland? Like, what kind of I stuff did he? I wasn't very good in English. Huh? Oh, okay. but, but he inspired you. Because of me, just, just he's he was an amazing poet writing this crazy stuff, and he, he inspired me and my friend to make crazy stuff. And just be free and open with your creativity. Um, it was very, I mean, cool. But to us, you know, we were like, I don't think, I don't think you could call us groupies, but we were Victor Dada. You know, they were because there's nobody that would make music like them ever, and uh, so we were. He opened my mind to to the universe. So, uh, did that at the time, somehow we got to Victor Dada. I don't know when I was first going to the balcony club. Uh, we mentioned uh, somehow it came across that he knew those guys. And, um, I was like, wow, oh, no, no way. And I mean, I I I I'm. I'm Fairly doubtful. They, that was just someone in the crowd, you know, in his class, you know, whether we remember who I was or not. Probably not. I don't even know. I guess as my English teacher, I probably had to discuss with them sometimes, but I don't recall it. The thing I recall the most was the performances in the planetarium. But it, it was so mind blowing that it was like I don't even remember the English class. Where was the planetarium? <laughs> At Richland. Okay. I didn't know if you went over there and Fair Park. He probably did it there too, but I mean, this was a, they had a multi, you know, the pictures of history and the universe and all kinds of stuff going while they're playing this bomb music and doing their poetry and. Uh, was there? It was very, very, very cool. But now, I, I went to this discussed it since being here more uh, um, Michelle I don't said know who was in the band or who wasn't I don't know the names of the other people but I do remember Stanko yeah they're all the Stankos they um, I don't remember look, which one is in the they still live on Victor Street Michelle does that's oh. that was Joe's wife and apparently Allen Ginsberg, when he would come to Dallas, he would go down to Victor Street and hang out with them at their house. Wow, I mean, I believe it. That would be a place where he would hang out. They were. Yeah, sounds like a. I don't know, it's just kind of an enclave of culture right down yeah, the street. Yeah, I mean, like I said, my friend had a, a show of my paintings here in this neighborhood in her house of probably 99 or 2000. I can't remember exactly, 99 maybe it was. But that's all I knew. My friend lived here. I didn't know that this was Victor Dada Street. <laughs> all these creative people everywhere. This is amazing. You know, it's really beautiful to discover that. I mean, I figured if Alonso Allen Ginsberg came to Downs, of course, everyone knows who he is. And, and, and it would make sense that he would hang out with those guys because they were Dallas poetry. <laughs>